Hello everyone! In our Spotlight videos and our monthly Orchids in Bloom videos, we always like to reference, as best as we can, how the flowers smell and if they're fragrant. And recently we realized we've never actually put together a video about what are, to us, the best smelling orchids we have. Of course, describing smells is hard enough as it is on top of scent being very subjective and personal. The best example I can think of is the Maxillaria variabilis. It smells great to Jay, like toasty walnuts. And to me, it's more like burnt plastic. So I'm going to try my best to describe why I like the scent on these orchids. But who knows, maybe you would find them really unpleasant. The first orchid on our list, that has no particular order, by the way, is Phalaenopsis Corning's Violet. We actually have two very similar primary hybrids. This one, which is Corningiana crossed with Violacea, and what we call her sister, the Corning's Bell, that have Corningiana crossed with Bellina. And they look and smell very similar. The bell might be a bit more striking, but the violet, to me, has a better scent. They both smell kind of spicy. But the violet smells to me very American, <laughs> because it smells like the drink Dr. Pepper. Or like one of the flavors in the candy spice gum drops. What's interesting about the genetics of scent in orchids is that, considering they smell different, you think that the difference comes from the Bellina and the Violacea. And those two do smell different, because we also have them, but none of them has that wonderful, sweet, spicy smell I was talking about. We do not have the Corningiana, but we're curious to one day smell it, and see if one of these hybrids by chance got more of its smell than the other. Or if it's just a lucky genetic combination. The next orchid that I wanted to mention is much more well known. The almost mandatory in every collection, Neophanicia falcata. It has a fragrance that has been described as jasmine, gardenia, vanilla, and of all of those, I think the jasmine is more prevalent. But I can see where people get the other two. I absolutely love the smell of jasmine and the smell of gardenia. They might be my two favorite flowers for fragrance. So as you can imagine, I absolutely love our Neophanicia. And the smell is not shy either. It smells mostly at night, so when it's in flower, it's like a treat for me to go by the plant room before bed. I like it so much that even though the flowers are very unique and the plant is really different and compact, when I think of Neophanicia, I think of the scent. I would love to have more varieties, but they are not very easy to get. Here in Europe, I only know of one vendor that has them, and my poor wallet if I ever decide to order from them. Next, we have the Maxillaria tenifolia. A perfect example of how personal scent can be. It's known as the coconut orchid. Maybe also because of the shape of its pseudobulbs, 
but definitely because of its distinct sweet coconut smell. However, when ours flowered for the first time, I smelled coconuts, sweet coconut cocktails, a very specific coconut scented sunscreen from my childhood. And Jay, he smelled peaches. A year later, we get more flowers and he still insists it's peaches. But it's a wonderful sweet fragrance either way. So if this orchid's unique foliage and beautiful big flowers weren't enough to sell you on it, the scent should definitely be a reason to consider getting one. Another orchid very famous for its fragrance is the iconic Oncidium Sherry Baby. It's known as the chocolate orchid, so you can imagine what the smell is like. To me, it doesn't smell exactly like pure chocolate, more like a sweet childhood chocolatey drink. It's still a very pleasant, sweet scent. The flowers are very pretty, but the flower spikes are so long and unruly, and the plant so big, that I think if it wasn't for its fragrance, we wouldn't love it as much. And if we look at this plant's parentage, we can find an orchid that it's also on this list later on. Next, we want to talk about a lesser known orchid, our Aredes hybrid. We don't hear a lot about Aredes in the hobby, probably because the plants are as big as the biggest Vandas, but with sprays of small flowers. We got this one not knowing how big the plant would be, and the flowers just look like a lot of other Aredes flowers but the scent is absolutely amazing. If we research the parents, one is described as having a lemon and anise smell, while the other goes from cinnamon to minty lily of the valley smell descriptions. When it comes to the hybrid, the scent is very hard to describe. It is definitely very fresh, maybe spicy but without the warmness, and a little sweet. If you'll allow me to be a little abstract, it smells to me as if tropical fruit smelled floral. I hope that makes some sense to at least some of you. <laughs> The smell is also very strong. You can smell it beyond the orchid room. Next, we have a species Dendrobium, the really well-known Dendrobium kingianum. We haven't seen many mentions of this plant's scent. Some sources say similar to honey, others say it smells like hyacinth, but to us it just smells straight up like honey. And it's wonderful. We have an issue with our kingianum. It drops some of its flowers and the others that do open, all open at different times. So I have to imagine that if you manage to get it to open all its flowers at once, the smell might even be overwhelming. But 
But as ours is, I love to stick my face in and smell it. That's how good the honey fragrance is to me. We just got another variety of Kingianum and I'm curious to see if it smells any different. We didn't want to fill this list with Phalaenopsis, but I had to add another one, one of my absolute favorite fells. It has since been registered as Phalaenopsis alfinia, but when we got it, it was just Phalaenopsis violacea crossed with Finley. And how can I describe this orchid's scent? To me, it smells like the best fabric softener ever. Fresh, a little powdery, cozy scent. Now, I can tell you that it smells nothing like the Violacea. And I buy every Finley hybrid I can find because I love them so much. But none of them smells like this either. I can't find references of Phalaenopsis Finley ever having a fragrance, but it's not a very documented orchid either way. I don't know if I'll ever get one, because something tells me it's not an easy species to grow, but I'll definitely give it a whiff if I ever see it somewhere. Now we have to talk about one of the species of Ancidium that gives origin to the Sherry Baby that we talked about earlier. By chance, this was our first Ancidium ever back in the day, and it remains our favorite. We've had this orchid for so long, when we first got it, it was still being misnamed as Ancidium ornithorhynchum. As pretty as it is, where it shines to me is the fragrance. Online you can see references to vanilla, cocoa, spices, candy, grapes. I cannot describe it at all, except that it's very sweet and very pleasant. The flowers look a lot like the ones on this plant's famous hybrid, the Oncidium Tiny Twinkle. You would think those would be more desirable because of their smaller sized plant, but the fragrance on them is nothing like this. In fact, to me, they would belong more on a unique fragrances video. So if you want the sprays of small Oncidium flowers with an amazing fragrance, you have to get the original species. Next, we have another Maxillaria, which makes me wonder if I need to research more fragrant Maxillarias to buy. This one is the Picta, that not only has flowers that are really unique and big for the plant size, but smells really, really good, even with just a couple of flowers. When you look up online, it's frequently described as sweet and slightly pungent. But to us, this is another one that smells pretty much just like honey. Maybe also a little fruity. I wish it didn't flower in a completely different season from the Dendrobium kingiano, so I could compare the two.
Finally, we have to mention our Cattleya walkeriana hybrid. I was stumped on how to describe what I remember from this orchid's fragrance, so I looked up the parents. The Walkerian itself is apparently known as the most strongly fragrant of all the Cattleyas, as it smells of cinnamon and vanilla. Lelia perenni is supposed to smell spicy and floral. I don't think I remember this hybrid smelling spicy or anything as strong as cinnamon but it was definitely a warm and sweet smell, and very floral. Between this hybrid smell and the fact that the Walkeriana is supposed to be one of the most compact Cattleya species, we might just grab one someday. And that's our list for now. It was really hard to narrow it down to 10 plants. This almost had an honorable mention section, but we exerted some self-control. Maybe in the future we can make a part two. We also would like to eventually make a list of worst smelling orchids. And like I said, maybe even a uniquely scented orchids list. So let us know if that's something you would be interested in. And also let us know if there's any orchids you think we should get for their fragrance. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye.